what's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome to an informative video. So if you came looking for this topic, congratulations, you found exactly what you want. If you'd like to keep transparency information in Premiere Pro exported projects to use in other projects, let's say you have a green screen that you remove the green from, save it into a QuickTime file that ends up being 30 gigabytes, and you can drop that over any other content you edit because say it's your outro, it's a transition, etc, etc. It's going to take a huge amount of space, but of course it'll be pretty fast. If you're like me and you don't want these videos with alpha to take up so much space, there is something else we can do that is hugely more space efficient. So to begin, first of all, I'll start with an example and then get into how to use alpha videos or matte videos, which is just white on black to get alpha information or transparency information in Premiere Pro with basically the same performance, if not better, depending on your hard drive speed. So I'll go ahead and download a video off of here, say this transition looking one. I'll free download, download the 1080p video, and we can use this. So I'll drop this video into a folder, and you can see it's sitting at around 700 kilobytes. Importing this to Premiere, you can see the clip's probably four-ish seconds, and it's quite an intense transition. But if we go to effects and search for ultra key, we can remove the green screen background as such. I'm not going to bother with cleaning it up. And for an example, I'll add an image here. So I'll just use the current wallpaper I'm using. There we go. You can see what the transition looks like over this image. So let's go ahead and export this transition here without a background by selecting, say, QuickTime and then choosing Apple ProRes with Alpha or Cineform RGB with Alpha and then simply just exporting it. This way, just saving it, you'll see the usual way that you do this. So we now have an 87 megabyte file instead of a 700 kilobyte file. But the magic about this file here is that if I drop it over a clip or something, you can see right through it without any extra effort required, no keying, etc., etc., and the performance should be pretty good. Though the only issue is file size. For a four second clip, it's 80 or 90 megabytes. You can only begin to imagine how big this gets, especially when lots is happening on the screen. Okay. So can we make this any more efficient? Well, of course you can. If we go ahead and export this transition here without changing anything as H.264, the only thing I will do is change to my preset, which is effectively the same as normal, but I have the CBR down here, the bitrate set to 200 megabits a second to get a super clean image. I'll name it just transition and I'll export it. Now, of course, as you'll expect, this will have a background and we won't be able to see through it. So dropping it in, six megabytes, there's that background that I was talking about. How do we get rid of that? Well, let's go ahead and come back here. Then we'll export a new video file. This time I'll rename it something like transition underscore alpha, just so we know what it is. Save, and I'll leave everything else as is, but I'll take render alpha channel only. This way, we'll get a black and white video. Anything that's white is information that's kept. Anything that's black is information that's removed and everything in between, well, that's handled as well. Let's quickly export this. And as you can see, we now have a six meg file and a two meg file, which is so much better than an 80 megabyte file. So let's import this one here and the alpha channel, which I'll place on top of it. I'll just split these and remove the audio. And you can see we have the black and white alpha channel up here. Then right below it, we have the actual one with color. So this still doesn't really help us as we can't see our image through this. What do we need to do? Well, in the effects tab, simply search for matte, M-A-T-T-E, and it'll be dragging the track matte key onto our video with actual color and information on it. Then from matte, change it from none to the channel right above it, which is usually the only one available there. And as you can see, we still can't see through it. But if we change composite using to matte luma, we can immediately see through the video and things are working great as you'd hope. Now we've successfully changed an 80 megabyte file into two files that total to about eight. That's a solid one tenth of the size with practically the same quality. You may notice a little bit of a difference in edges, etc., etc., because we're not exporting such a huge high quality file, but for a transition and things like that, that only use squares and sharp edges, this is probably going to look pretty good, if not perfect. So congratulations, you can now save yourself tons of space. But before you click off, the only place that this falls apart seems to be with odd aspect ratios. Let me give you an example. I'll throw these all in a bin for now. Another video file that I downloaded off of Pixabay is called Curtain. The only thing about this video here is that, as you'll see, it's an odd aspect ratio. It's not 16 by 9. 
Let's just quickly repeat the steps here and see what happens. First of all, the key, and I'll export the video. Ah, actually, no, I understand why this is falling apart. It's just a quirk with the video and how it was made. 1920 by 1080, this is not 16 by 9 at all. This is where the issue is, but I'll get there in just a moment. 200 megabits, I'll export this as just, say, C, export, and I'll export the exact same video, this time calling it C underscore A. This time as well, I'll check render alpha channel only, export, wait for it to finish. And just for good luck, I'll go ahead and export the QuickTime version so you can see the size comparison. QuickTime 12 bit, export, here we go. So over here, I have the QuickTime, which is 58 megabytes over the original 300 kilobyte file. The normal video with the black background is four megabytes and the alpha channel is 500 kilobytes. Obviously the QuickTime video is gonna work properly, I'll just drag that in to give you an example. Then of course the normal video with the alpha channel above it should also work properly, but let's go ahead and test this now. So placing in my background, you can see the nice little transition here. Cool, that works as expected. Let's look over the next one. This is the QuickTime export. Things work as expected as well. And this is the final one up here. Things are working as expected so far. Let's go ahead and grab the matte key, drop it onto the bottom video, select the channel above it, and things don't look too good. I'll change it from Matt Alpha to Matt Luma, and that doesn't help the situation at all. It's out of sync, it's the wrong aspect ratio, what on earth is going wrong? Well, I think this is just a quirk with the way that the video was made. Something very odd about this file that I downloaded is that even though it says it's 1080p, it's most definitely not 1080p. Having a look at the original video file here, opening it with the media info, as you can see, we have some information about the codec, video codec, etc., etc. 1920 by 1080. This is not correct. Obviously, because I dragged it into Premiere Pro, and it's this aspect ratio here. What on earth is this aspect ratio? I'll just take a picture of this, save it into, say, the same place as the videos, and open up the picture. Here's the picture. Hmm. Things, uh, things look a bit crushed up there. Yep, I'm not too sure what's going on here. The video file itself seems to be set up or exported wrong. The odd little quirk aside that I've truly never seen before at this point. <laughs> you shouldn't have issues with the way that we're going around here. The only thing you'll notice is odd fringing things on curved edges and maybe not curved edges, but things that move quickly with not a lot of information. Maybe you'll lose some transparency info, like maybe a bit of a shadow or partially transparent things, uh, odds are it's probably good enough for the case that you're gonna be using it in. And this is, this is great, this is perfect. As far as I've seen, there's practically no performance difference between these two styles. And of course, if you'd like, you can just nest these videos and use them anywhere else. Now you can take across your templated project or whatever, drop this nested sequence that you can name whatever on and replace the huge 80 megabyte files you had before. And of course, it's much better than using the original with the ultra key on it, as rendering it out, keying out every frame is gonna take a lot longer than just using a pre-rendered project like the one here. Of course, the performance won't be on the exact same level as using a QuickTime video, as that's usually really, really fast, but you'll be saving a huge amount of hard drive space, which when we're talking about multiple gigabytes for a couple of minutes of video, it's absolutely worth it. So anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been taken over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!